Did you know at one time, there was only one church? Every single church building you saw belonged to the church. I'm saying there was no central Christian church, no Sun Valley Christian church on that corner, no CCV, no Rock Point, no Redemption, no Cornerstone, no Mission Church, no whatever cool name we think of to call ourselves. Any church building you saw just belonged to the church. And this word church actually comes from our Bible. So. In the book of Acts, which was written in ancient Greek, we have this word, ekklesia. Um, I definitely said that wrong, my bad. I don't know how to pronounce it. But this ancient Greek word that means church actually has some majorly impactful meaning for our understanding of the church today. I love how one pastor I studied said this. Ekklesia is compromised of two Greek words, ek, which means out from and to, and kaleo, which means to call. In other words, the word literally means the called out, or when applied specifically to Jesus's church, the called out of the world and to Jesus. The original definition we're working with for the church were these people, not a building, that were called out of the world and to Jesus. But then, that Greek word ekklesia was translated to Latin, and then it was translated to German, and then that was translated to Old English, which I didn't even know there was a language called Old English, the things you learn. Then that was translated to modern English, or what most of us speak today, uh, and we now say the word church to describe people called out of the world and to Jesus. Okay, so why is this important? Stick with me, because we are going to someday, someday get there. In the Gospels, we only see the word church used three times. Jesus says it in the book of Matthew, specifically when he's talking to his disciples and he says, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus established the church, not a building, a group of people called out of the world and to Jesus. And for about a thousand years, we had a Christian church. The book of Acts in our New Testament is a literal foundation for how the church was built and created. A lot happened in the thousand years. And if you're interested in learning more, you can borrow my 490 page copy of the story of Christianity, volume one. Yes, volume one, because Christianity starts to get super messy. In 1054, the Christian church splits into the Western side, which is the Holy Roman Catholic Church, and then the Eastern Orthodox side, okay? So we have our first major church split in our history. Check out that map, cool. Then 500 years later, we get the Protestant Reformation and we have a guy, his name is Martin Luther. No, 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 not MLK Jr., different guy, you guys, who in 1519 nails 99 theses to the door of the church because he had some major problems with what the Catholic Church was doing. And then we get the Lutherans from that church split. Get it? Like Martin Luther, Lutherans? Okay. A few years later, in 1534, uh, the King of England, Henry VIII, wanted to get divorced from his first wife because he didn't like her anymore. And he wanted to go to marry this other lady. And the Catholic Church was like, no, and they didn't want to give him a divorce. Uh, and so he splits the church, uh, the Catholic Church, into the Church of England, and then we get the Anglicans. By the way, if you want to learn more about the history of England, please go ask Rachel, who is British. Moving on. Okay, so then we get the Presbyterians, who split in 1559, and then we get the Congregationalists that split in, off in 1581, and then we get the Baptists that leave in 1608, and then the Methodists in 1784, and it goes on and on and on. And if you ever go to the Bible college like I did, at some point you're going to study this map that shows like all the different divisions and all the different church splits, and you're going to be like, oh, look at that, look at that, that's where we come from. And then eventually, in, uh, Central Christian Church is established in 1959, and we're here today, our own branch from a massive Christian tree of different churches and denominations. And guys, this is not what Paul wanted for us. Read with me in Ephesians 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Paul is pleading for unity. There is one body, meaning one church, one spirit. We all have the same Holy Spirit working in our lives. One hope, Jesus. One Lord, Jesus. One faith in Jesus. One baptism in the name of Jesus. One God and the Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. One. One group 
that was the dream, the hope, the established idea of the church was to be a group of people called out of the world and to Jesus. When non-Christians look at our history of fighting and splitting up and going off to establish our own thing, why would they want to join us? It's one of the things that frustrates me the most about the world we live in. If Pastor Cal says something you don't like, you can just drive down the street and find a different church that you agree with more. Instead of these churches in the valley being united, it turns us against each other. And there's like this big division sometimes. It feels like Central versus CCV versus Sun Valley or Rock Point. Like people would threaten us. Like if this doesn't change at Central, I'm gonna go blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they expect us to fight for them to stay with us. But instead we're like, cool. All of those churches are awesome churches. There are a ton of pastors at other churches in the valley that love Jesus. They believe in raising up your generation to be proud disciples of Christ. The pastors that I know are kind and loving and faithful in pursuing a healthy ministry. So if that's where you can best love and serve God, then that's okay. The beauty of different churches and denominations is that our faith can look different and we choose to worship God in different ways. But those differences do not need to equal division. It can equal beauty. And most importantly, we can celebrate what God is doing at other churches in our community. I love when new people visit our church, but it makes me even more excited when that new person has never been to a church before. I think we all know it's really easy to invite our already Christian friend to church. It's much harder to make that ask to someone who never attends church. We should never try to see Central or CSM grow by like poaching people from other churches. We need to go after those who do not belong to a church. That's who we need to be passionate about inviting into our community. We're going to jump down now to verse 14, but don't worry, we are not just skipping over these verses in the Bible. Come back to CSM Life Groups on your campus on Wednesday night, and we're going to dive into those verses a little bit deeper. So read with me here on verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. By understanding that our faiths can look different, we don't need to go chasing after the newest church with cool lights or the coolest topics they're talking about. Instead, when our faith is maturing, we understand that it does not matter who is the senior pastor of your church because Jesus is the head of the church. Isn't it crazy that we can be more loyal to a professional sports team than to our own local church? Paul's writing that it shows maturity in staying put and not being tossed back and forth by the newest trends and teachings that can happen in other churches. And maybe this feels a bit contradictory to what I said earlier, but it's important for you to find a church and stay. Stay planted, stay rooted, be willing to grow, stay in a church that allows you to be faithful because it allows for you to grow into a disciple of Christ. Any church you are a part of, including Central or somewhere else, you will always find something you disagree with in how the church runs or what the church preaches. And you and your family have to decide if it is a major enough issue that you can't be part of that community anymore. However, the Christian culture that has been created today says if you don't like something here, there's something better there down the road. Being part of the church is not about your needs being met because that's not the point of people being called out of the world into Jesus. The point of the church, we being the church, is to not be like the world. It's to be called out of the world and be pointing others to Jesus. Church is not something to be consumed. It's not a brand like Nike or Adidas. The church is a group of people. We know one another. We support one another. We love one another. Our goal is not to make our CSM Penguin brand better than a different church. Our goal is to point you to Jesus. As a student in our ministry, it is our hope and prayer that you will grow up and stay at Central, that your future children will someday be part of CSM, maybe even your grandkids. We want this to be your church home. We want you here. We value you here. We love you here. 
but more than your loyalty to Central, the most important thing to us is your loyalty to Jesus as the head of the church. The most important thing to us is that when you graduate out of CSM, and yes, I'm looking at you seniors, is that you stay in the church, meaning the big Christian church, however that needs to look for you. Each one of you, as you get older, have to start to claim your faith in Jesus for yourself. At some point, it can no longer be your parents' decision, your friends' decision, your life group leader's decision for you to come to church and be part of the community here. At some point, it's gotta all come down to you and what you believe and being part of a church that cheers you on as you discover and fully own your faith in Jesus. And if along that journey or path, you find that your faith can grow stronger in a different community, let's stop making it a fight. Let's stop making it about division and differences and instead, let's celebrate that you're continuing to passionately pursue Jesus. And when we realize Jesus is the head of the church, we can start supporting and loving and celebrating other churches instead of fighting against them. There are some common things we need to agree upon with other churches, but once those things are agreed upon, the rest are secondary issues. For the church to grow in this post-COVID world, we need to be together with one another. We're working on this as pastors, and now we want to invite you in to this challenge of being united with other churches in the valley. The church was established to be a group of people called out of the world and to Jesus. Wherever your journey leads you, may it always point to Jesus. Thanks, CSM.